All right, here we go, guys. Here she is, hopefully sold. Brought us many years of good luck. Mr. Sweeney put so much hard work into this, but it's the cobia, not my spot. Uh, like I said, looks like she's sold. And in about five minutes, we are gonna have delivery here of the brand new boat. And we'll come right back as she's pulling in. Hauler's gonna call me when he's, uh, when he's a minute out. And as you saw in that opening clip, this was a, a bittersweet day for me, May 11, 2019. You know, I said goodbye probably the last time I'm seeing it, the 2005 or 2015 Cobia 256 that I co-owned with John Sweeney that brought us so many great memories, so many big fish caught on it. Um, but uh, also a happy moment saying hello to the new to me 2005 CV31 with the twin 2017 Verado 350s, long warranty on them till 2025, low hours, 250 hours. Uh, I'll, I'll describe in the video the purpose of the boat it's going to be hopefully a, a charter boat and we'll get into the whole captain's license thing um a little later in the video uh but really the the focus of this video is i wanted to take people through the used boat buying experience the highs and lows and continuous struggles it, it was not easy um and i'll go into that uh, a little further uh, later in the video um we'll also do a, a quick intro to this new boat uh, do a quick walkthrough the boat was dirty it was just a 1300 mile journey from florida here to eastern long island uh, but uh, hopefully it'll bring as many great memories as the Cobia did and hope you enjoy the video. All right, we're back on the boat. A uh, little overview of the boat. We're here at North Shore Yacht Sales in Mattituck. The boat's going to be here for, I don't know how long, hoping not more than a week or two, but to be determined. Um, hey, the business end, the Stern, uh, Merc 350 Verados, uh, 2017. The boat itself is an 05. It's a CV310B, but reason I bought the boat those bad boys um, warranty platinum warranty a $13,000 add-on to the cost of the engines eight-year warranty through 2025 um, rest of the boat ginormous live well 60 gallons uh, this seat is coming out um, I, I need uh, it, I thought it would just pop out but it doesn't apparently I need some tools to get it out uh, this little freeze bucket here could keep uh, bait in there or use it for storage or you know it looks insulated you can even uh, keep a drink or two in there. Access here, there is a ginormous fish box here or storage box. There are trays here and look at this. The prior owners left me straws, sippy straws, and those will get thrown away. Uh, they also left me some old line that will also get thrown away. We'll put some Plano boxes in there. This is really cool. Frigid, rigid uh, cooler on a slide out tray. Hard to operate the camera and do this, but uh, they did not leave me anything in here. Really cool feature. Um, and as we go forward, we're gonna get some new electronics. That Garmin is staying. That Raymarine screen is dead. That's going bye-bye. It's gonna be replaced with a hummingbird. Um, and this monstrosity, it's, I'm guessing this is about six feet long. This is coming out and we're gonna have uninterrupted, this comes out, but again, you need tools. Uninterrupted fishing space galore. This is, I think, about 32 or 31 and a half feet from stern to bow, uninterrupted. And once that's out, you can obviously put a bunch of people here fluke fishing. And that's the purpose of the boat. It's going to be a charter boat. <sighs> and I, you know. Back in January, I, I started the new boat buying saga where, you know, at the New York Boat Show, I, uh, they had a captain school there and I, I made the mistake or <laughs> hopefully not the mistake, but I made the mistake of stopping and talking to the guy there and I uh, took his card and I thought, why not? You know, a lot of the comments I've read is uh, in, in our comments, do you charter, do you charter, do you charter? And of course we can't charter without A, a captain's license, and B, uh, a New York State Charter license here in New York at least. So, you know, I decided I was gonna give it a try. Um, so I started looking for boats, and this is actually the third boat I've contracted and left a deposit on, the third. Yes, the third. Um, the used boat buying experience really, really, really sucks. Um, I'll come to the cockpit and do the rest of this. 
So there are only a few things I was looking at when I started the, the boat buying saga in, in mid-January after, uh, after I decided I was going to become a boat captain and get my Coast Guard license and start a charter business. Um, and, you know, the boat had to be 30 to 32 feet so that six people could relatively fish in comfort. The boat had to have no forward seating. That, that was the drawback with the Cobia, which was an, a fantastic boat. Uh, John Sweeney poured his heart into that boat, that, that he had that boat loaded to the gills. But any way you looked at it, that boat would make a poor charter boat because of the forward seating. And I loved Kobe, I loved their quality, and honestly, uh, if they made a model without forward seating, I would have bought it. But they don't, so I started looking, and I found a great deal on a, uh, a 2015 Sea Hunt Gamefish Coffin Box Edition, 30 feet long, twin 300s. A few hundred hours on them, I think maybe 390, uh, but warranty until 2021. The price was right. They took my boat as a trade on top of it. Um, we trailer, this was down in South Jersey. We trailer my boat down there. We're all ready to go. I'm so excited. I, I'm, I'm joined the Sea Hunt Owners Club on Facebook. I'm asking questions on the boating sites. I'm, I'm literally bleeding Sea Hunt Blue, and uh, lo and behold, it fails to survey. And uh, there's the uh, <laughs> Murphy's Law. We're doing this, and yeah, there's the train. Regardless. Um, so yeah, so it failed survey. It had, uh, I hired Steve Maddock, and I'll include a link in the description. He's a surveyor. He's very well known here in Long Island. He found a five foot long crack in the stringer right in the base, right under the council where the, where the head is. Uh, and literally, my boat guy went under, my boat yard guy went with them with my boat to, for the trade-in, and you could actually um, see the hull flexing when, when Steve Maddock was under the boat pushing up where the, the broken stringer was. Um, Red could see the hull going in and out, and, and Steve could feel it. I just, uh, and what Steve told me, having uh, surveyed a bunch of sea hunts before, is if you're gonna use this boat in the ocean and you're, you're gonna be a, a charter guy, and, and please, sea hunt guys, don't hate me, I'm repeating what they told me. Uh, sea hunt is just not the, the type of boat you wanna do that in, because it's, 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 it's a price point boat, and it's just not built, it's not overbuilt, put it that way. So. My good buddy Rick with the Blue Jay happened to be in Miami around this time at the Miami Boat Show, and uh, he was in love with the Sea Hunters. So we had Sea Hunt, now we have Sea Hunter. Uh, and that'll segue eventually into CV. I, I guess the, the prerequisite here is the boat had to start with the word C, S-E-A, but notwithstanding that, let's, let's stay on track, John. Stay on track. Okay, we're back on track. Um, sea Hunter. He told him he has a friend. He told me what, what the budget was. It was, uh, you know, without my trade, I, I, I said I could possibly go up. You know, I was looking at around 150, but I could go a little higher if the right boat came along. So Sea, Hunt, uh, sea Hunter called me a couple days later and said, hey, we just made a deal at the Miami Boat Show on a 39. It's a current owner who has a 32. It's a 2016 32. Uh, Rick gave us your your contact information, 190,000, and he told us you have a smaller boat, a 25 Cobia. Our owner wants the 39 built, and he also asked us to find a smaller boat for him, for his kids. We're gonna list it for 190, we'll sell it to you for 130, and we'll take your Cobia in a trade. Deal made, on the spot, uh, pending, obviously, survey. Survey is critical, guys. Uh, I think we're gonna have that in the title. So, surveyor hired, he gets down there. Now, to see Hunter's credit, they had just gotten the boat. I literally sent that surveyor a day or two after the boat arrived, it was in the water. So they hauled it out um, so he could do on the hard the inspection. Uh, they hadn't run it, they hadn't really done anything with it and failed survey. Uh, <laughs> it literally uh, was leaking water out of the transducer for over an hour that the surveyor watched it. Um, and he put a moisture meter to the, to, the, to the back of the boat and it was reading somewhere in the 17 to 20% range of water saturation in the hull and he also found extensive damage that had been uh, repaired in the bow and what he thinks happened was they got into a high-speed collision repaired the bow but uh, there was damage to the back in fact the transom had a, a number of uh, cracks along it and he he said i will not let you buy this boat uh the sea hunter guys they were great it's it's a boat i wish i could have owned i mean it's it's a beast rick actually test rode it and fell in love with it, said it rode better than his uh, Metal Shark Fearless 32. 
um, it was a beautiful boat, and uh, uh, I, I, you know, I, I wish they didn't have that issue, but it did. So, uh, on to boat three. This is the 2005 CV. Um, I worked with Peck Yachts. They were listing it. Ed Brecht. Uh, he did not represent me. I did not have. I was my own representative. But uh, the guys at Peck Yachts and Ed Brecht could not have been more accommodating. Uh, amazing communication. It listed all the faults to the boat. There's a few little things we have to work out. Pumps, uh, a screen that's bad. Um, great communication. We ran into a snafu though, where the seller, who uh, it was an LLC, and the the holder of the LLC was in Panama. The boat was in North Miami. Um, the seller lost the title. So we got delayed about a month with closing. Um, and then to make it mad matters worse, if the boat didn't have a trailer, so we ordered a, a or I ordered an next trail for it. And uh, yeah, the, the trailer got delivered. The shipper, Diego, who you know uh, brought the boat today, three days driving it up from North Miami. He showed up bright and early Friday to, to get everything done. Uh, pardon me, Thursday morning, 8 a.m and the trailer is in pieces. Now when I called Next Trail, um, you know, we negotiated a price and delivery of the of the trailer to the marina in North Miami and he told me the the salesman we we built these trailers for for CV310s a, a million times to Sunday. Um, we will have it blueprinted. I didn't even know what that meant. It'll be perfect. It'll be waiting for you. It'll they just have to put the boat on. We built a ton of these for CV. So Diego shows up to pick it up and the trailer is literally in pieces. That front piece, the vertical piece all the way that, that the bow of the boat rests on was not even connected. It wasn't bolted in. It was it was taped to the trailer. The bunks were flat. The, the vertical bunks, the horizontal bunks, they were all flat. They had to be fitted. Um, I had to find somebody short notice. I had Diego waiting there nine hours to find somebody um, to do the job. It cost me $400 out of pocket. Um, terrible uh, terrible customer service uh, and when I called the owner to complain uh, the same day and ask can he find somebody does he know anybody down there I'll pay for it the response I got was no no I'm in Ocala which is I guess a few hundred miles away I can't help you and when I complained about his salesman uh, he said and I quote uh, I shouldn't say I quote this is not verbatim but it was something along the lines of well you know how salesmen are they'll say anything to make a sale we don't deliver any trailers that way um, to make matters worse, when, when nine hours later, when they were ready to leave, or, or before they were ready to leave, they noticed that the uh, there, were no, there was no paperwork for the trailer, so I called them again, I spoke to the owner, and he kind of told me, well, we, we delivered with the trailer, when the person who took delivery would have been handed the trailer and he would have signed for it. So we, we spoke to the marina employee, swore up and down, a 12-year employee, the owner vouched for him, that nothing was given to him. The owner said he'd call me back um, with that info, with who signed for it. They keep a, a ledger, apparently, or they, they make them sign something. Uh, five hours, nothing. I call back, nothing. Uh, so we'll follow up again on Monday. Um, you know, it's possible they gave it to somebody, but they all said they were going to call me back with the name, and they didn't. So, uh, I don't know. Bad experience. Uh, not, not a happy one. Um, in the middle of all that, Oli Parker from Parker Yachts went out of his way. I called him. He's, he owns a great boat dealership in... Uh, in Fort Lauderdale, if anybody down in South uh, South Florida is watching this, uh, he's a Yamaha authorized dealer, Wet Sounds, a bunch of other things. Um, guy went out of his way to try to help me, um, and you know, luckily the, the the shipper actually found somebody while we were scrambling to find somebody who who could do it. It was going to be a little delayed, but it got done. It's now Saturday afternoon. I'm not fishing today. I'm out here. Uh, I was waiting for the delivery. I'm on the boat. Got a lot of work to do to it. Got to make it clean. Uh, but, uh, you know, a, the point of this video is not, well, I guess it is to show the, the boat first, you know, first time to the, the, the folks that watch this channel, uh, but also to educate people on, on buying used boats. Um, surveyors are friggin' life and death. I, you would never, that 2015 Sea Hunt, the pictures, it, it looked like a brand new boat. It was sparkling white inside. There wasn't a scratch on it yet it had catastrophic hull damage that the surveyor said had to, Steve Maddox said, and the surveyor who was surveying my boat and they showed him the, the damage said the same thing. This can only be repaired at Sea Hunt. It was in such an awkward spot in the middle of the hull all the way down. Um, and then Sea Hunter, I mean, those those are right up there with Yellowfin, CV, they're, they're top tier boats. 
um, and it rode great, but you would have been buying a boat that had structural issues and down the line, waterlogged boats, boats with cracked transoms, the, you know, it would have been big trouble. You need a surveyor. Surveyors are amazing. The survey I used in Florida for the Sea Hunter and this boat was Scott Austin. I'll include his uh, details in the link. Um, tight lines, everybody. Hope you'd enjoyed this video. I know it's a little different. Uh, we will have details on the charter company, a li little bit on that. Um, it hasn't been formed yet. Well, we, I've set up the company, but I can't uh, start accepting charters until I get my Coast Guard license. And then I have to get my New York State Charter license, and I can't do I can't do the New York State Charter without the Coast Guard, and I can't do the, I you know the Coast Guard license. I the paperwork is submitted. I passed the tests. Uh, you know I took the class in the winter. Uh, uh, a couple of the tests are brutally hard. Those of you that are licensed captains will know what I'm talking about. The uh, the plotting and the rules of the road. Uh, you, you have very little leeway for error on those uh, on those tests. Um, those are two out of the four, but, uh, and then there's, a, there's, we'll probably wind up doing a whole video on how you become a licensed Coast Guard captain, because I didn't really find good information online, and it's, um, it's a lot of stuff. I mean, from drug tests, to sea, to sea time, to, to, to going down to Homeland Security and applying for a transportation worker identification card, interviews, fingerprints, um, medical. In any event, uh, we're back. Yeah, so like I said, the, that the Coast Guard class or the Coast Guard instruction uh, deserves a class of its own. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little different. Um, and, and listen, um, you know, I love boats. Uh, there's a couple boat sites that I frequent all the time, the Hall Truth, Band of Boaters. Um, if you have a cool boat in the New York, New Jersey area and you'd like it, uh, a review of it, happy to do it. Uh, I want to start doing that. Um, I, I know I've been in touch with somebody off Facebook that's got a, a beautiful uh, a yellow fin that will be doing a, a review of that boat in the future. Um, we'll still be doing all the fishing videos, but while this boat gets ready, I'll be uh, still scrambling to fish on other people's boats. Hopefully it's in the water in a couple weeks. Uh, but like, and what I was saying before too about the charter business, that's gonna, it's gonna take a little bit of time to get going. Um, we gotta wait for all those licenses to come in. So um, there will be a website, there's a name. I, I don't wanna say any of that until it's all official. Um, and you know I, I even though I have passed all the tests and gotten all the paperwork it, it, it's still a brutally painful process waiting for the Coast Guard to to formally you know recognize you as a captain and send you the license and then you got to apply for a New York State license so uh, hopefully by July we'll have all that in place and we can start advertising but until then tight lines everybody hope you enjoyed this video um, as always if you did like it hit that like button and if you're not already a subscriber and you like this content please hit that subscribe button.